Well, today we're going to talk about my bear hunt slash wolf hunt coming up uh, in August. Um, me and the wife are going. Uh, she's not hunting, of course, but she's going with to keep me company and, you know, just for seeing her and have fun. Um, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that I have, and it's kind of like a, not so much a bear dump or a, a pack dump as it is a, a pack pack for me to make sure I have everything. So as you can see, all the stuff I have laid out here, uh, I'm going to put this will all fit in one pack because we're only taking one pack. Uh, I'll be I'll be carrying everything in. Uh, my wife will just you know carry a bladder in basically a water bladder and her bottle in and then her weapon. Um, for my weapon that I'm gonna be carrying, I'm gonna be carrying the Mossberg Patriot 300 Win Mag, uh, the cryptic one with uh, the surcoat coating on it. So uh, I got 400 bucks invested in, uh, with a $99 Natchez Shooter Sports uh, uh, Nikon 4 by 12 power scope. If you want to see the video on that, I did another one on it. Uh, it's a great rifle for 400 bucks. I don't have to worry about dinging it, scratching it. You know, it's not an expensive rifle. Would I like to have a Weatherby, one of those backcountry ones? Yeah, but my other uh, Vanguard Weatherby I use for elk hunting, and uh, I figured this is going to be my bear hunting gear in, in a separate setup. So let me go over what, what we have. So uh, to start off with, me and the wife both carry handguns when we go in. Uh, we use chest rigs. And I've rigged them up uh, with the bear spray on top so you can pull it out, both right-handed shooters. So you can pull the bear spray out to the right, just like the handgun. Uh, I highly recommend that you, if you are gonna carry a gun for bear hunting, uh, that you either go with a 10 millimeter, such as a Glock or a 44 Magnum, which I have here. Uh, you wanna go with whatever you can shoot comfortably yourself and shoot accurately. Uh, my wife has shot the 44 Magnum. She doesn't like the recoil that she has, and even though it is a Taurus uh, 44 Magnum 5 shot. It is ported and it, the recoil is reduced, your felt recoil. However, she does not like the recoil of it and from uh, rapid succession shots that you've making for bear charge, you may only have two, three seconds. She didn't like it so well, so she shoots the Glock. She can get multiple rounds quickly on with that weapon uh, and, and she loves that. We recommend, I recommend the chest rigs. Uh, for years, I carried a, uh, a leg holster or a side holster if you had shoulder holsters before, but uh, I totally went to uh, chest rig because you can wear it with your pack on. When you take your pack off and you're field dressing your elk or you're quartering your elk, you've always got your gun on you so that if while you're quartering your elk, a grizzly comes up and decides to uh, steal your carcass and maybe kill you in the process, you at least have a fighting chance. You won't have to run back to your pack to get your gun that may be on a holster there, or you know if you got a leg holster, you may get uncomfortable and take it off. So let me give you a few tips on what I've learned over the years uh, as far as ammunition, the military and whatnot, and uh, what I think you should carry. Just my opinion, you don't have to, it's all up to you. But uh, going over ammunition here, so basically if you're talking about handgun ammunition, uh, you're always gonna have mostly a, this is a 44 Magnum, 220 grain, uh, I think it's 1400 feet per second round. It's got a, a lead base center hollow point with a copper jacket. This is where most handgun rounds are. Even if it's a, uh, a uh, non-hollow point, it's going to have a copper jacket over a lead core. Uh, the problem with that is when you uh, hit something such as a bear's skull or heavy fur in the shoulder areas of the bear, uh, this will have a tendency to mushroom and then fragment. The, uh, uh, the jacket will come off of it and you'll, you know, basically it'll flatten out and, and there's a chance it may not penetrate the skull and may not even do much damage to the chest area or penetrate that thick fur. Uh, the only rounds that are halfway decent are bonded rounds that law enforcement use. They have a process that bonds the jacket to the lead core, and that's a little better. But uh, Underwood Ammunition makes these rounds right here. Uh, if you can see these, she zooms in on that. You can see it's, it's kind of like a Phillips screwdriver tip. It's a solid copper core, uh, 220 grains, 1,600 feet per second. They're called extreme penetrator rounds. Uh, you know, these Phillips head design uh, penetrates really well. I mean, you could have even ask a mob member, he probably could tell you that, uh, you know, Phillips screwdrivers penetrate the skull real well. Uh, my attempt at humor. But basically, these, these rounds do penetrate really well. Uh, I would highly recommend if you're going to use either a 10 millimeter Glock or a 44 Magnum, or even if you're stuck with, you've got a 9 millimeter, you've got a 40 caliber. I've carried both of those in, in my law enforcement career and in my military career. Um, I recommend you get the extreme penetrator rounds because they at least give you a fighting chance. If you shoot a 40 uh, caliber, a nine millimeter with just a standard uh, hollow point or even a, a uh, you know full metal jacket, 
uh, as they call them, it's going to take and just fragment on you. That copper jacket is going to just come off. And there's a good chance it may not penetrate the skull at all or ricochet off the skull or just, you know, crease down the side of it. Uh, my, that's my advice. You don't have to do that. That's totally up to you. Things that I learned, you know, in sniper school was, you know, you always do the fatal T. So what, the, what I'm talking there is you look at the eyes and coming down through your mouth is where you would aim from the front. You're trying to hit the medulla oblongata uh, or the pons, preferably the medulla oblongata. Um, and what I'm getting at here, not to get off on a tangent because I have a tendency to do that, is with the bear, you're going to want to probably do the same thing. So frontal shot on a bear, you're going to want to go between the eyes and the T and down to the nose. Um, if you shoot the mouth, you may or may not. You probably won't get the spine because the bear's spine goes back down uh, horizontally. And so you're going to want to shoot for the eye sockets, the, the center of the head, uh, or the nose. Because if you shoot the nose, you're going to get the lower part of the brain. Uh, that's going to be your best shot. You know, aim for the head and start shooting. Uh, you only have a few seconds, and that's luckily I've never had to experience that. Me and my wife have been uh, real fortunate. Um, but that's my suggestion to you. You're gonna to have to practice this. We practice on a target that's uh, two and a half feet uh, tall by about three feet tall because uh, most times you go out to the range, there's man-sized silhouettes and you're shooting at a target that's chest level. And you really wanna have a target that's lower because the bear's gonna lower his head when he charges you and come at you. And he's usually only 36 inches to two and a half feet off the ground. So you wanna practice that trajectory because if you go to line up your sights and you're you know, you're not lined up properly, your rod is going to go low in, in, in front of the bear or over the top of the bear, and you don't want that. So I recommend you get a target, set it up. If, if preferably, you get someone to pull something at you on wheels if possible. A moving target would be better, but at least, if nothing else, shoot a target uh, 36 inches tall to 2 feet tall. Practice shooting different ranges with it and practice a lot. Try to build muscle memory. Muscle memory is basically a stimulus that when uh, you respond to a, a stressful situation, that you'll do exactly the same thing. You hold, grab your weapon the same way, you know, get the proper hold on it, initiate the trigger squeeze properly. Even though it's done fast, if you get 3,000 repetitions in, it subconsciously builds muscle memory and you're able to shoot the target. That's, that's the theory behind it, and I've seen it, and it does work. Um, moving on from the weapons, that's the two weapons we'll be carrying. My wife carries the Glock, I carry the 44 Magnum, both have pepper spray on top. Um, for sleeping bags, we're uh, going to use the Climates, uh, 20 degrees. You see we've got two of them here. Uh, I've got the compression sacks for them. Uh, when you compress these down, they're like 8 inches by 5.5 or 6 inches. They're really small when you use this compression sack that came from Climate. Uh, we'll both those. I've mean, I got all this stuff in this Metcalf uh, pack. Uh, it's, it gets all in there. There's plenty of room. This is the uh, cover that I use, rain cover. It's... Uh, it's a cryptic. It was really inexpensive. It goes down to this size pouch, and it's basically compact, real lightweight. I think it weighs uh, two ounces, and it's completely rainproof, so it keeps your contents from uh, getting wet. Uh, that's not very expensive. It's something you might want to consider. Um, talking about Garmin inReach, and I'm going to try to go through stuff, not forget anything. I think it's something you should have. Uh, it's worth the investment, worth the monthly fee. Uh, even if you just get the uh, basic service, good to have. Um, excellent tool if you get injured, you need to be medevaced out, this is the thing to have. Uh, this is another thing I like, I just purchased recently. Uh, if I was a smart guy with the uh, computer and whatnot, I could do a link to it, but I got it off of a guy named the Hiker Guy on YouTube. And him and his buddy make these apparently, and he had to go through SD or SD to get it. It was 20 bucks. Really like this, uh, it holds this so secure. So you just put this on here. Of course, I'm gonna mess up now. I got people watching, right? I guess I should have just, there we go. So it locks on like that and it's not going anywhere. It's right where you, where you got it and it comes on and off just like that. You just gotta be, there we go, I got it now. Of course, you know, uh, stage fright, wasn't getting it right. But it won't go anywhere, it locks on there. It's right where you need it, right below uh, on your lapel here, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, easy on, easy off. I like that. It was 20 bucks. I recommend it. I don't, I don't have the link. I wish I did. Hiker guy on YouTube. The other thing I have on here is the pouch from Mr. Ranch. Uh, because I use a cell phone, I use the 11 Pro to uh, carry my stuff. I like this because I can keep some extra batteries in here for my uh, lights and keep my cell phone in here and protect it from damage and whatnot. I really like that. Uh, I think it's a great idea. 
my 11 Pro battery just went out after a year. I'm supposed to go back this week that my wife is filming this on, and they're gonna put a new battery in because the warranty just about to expire. I noticed my battery wasn't limiting up to doing eight hours of time before it went dead. So uh, good news is they said to replace it. Moving along on the pack, before I get uh, long-winded and on tangent, I put the pouches on here. Uh, yeah, they don't match fashion thawing. This is the other pattern. I got them on clearance, but they work. I'm not a, I'm not a big guy in matching camo. Um, what I have in this pocket here is a rangefinder. It's a Leopold 600 uh, meter uh, rangefinder. It's one of the first ones I had. Uh, where we're going to be, you know, glassing for bear is going to be well under 600 meters because it's dark timber, and uh, we won't be able to get many glassing points that are further than that, so it'll work perfect. Uh, I've got a wind smoker here, you know, with talcum powder basically to to uh, do that. And inside, I've got a uh, lensetic military compass and a standard uh, flat compass. I think it's a Sunto camera. I've got a bunch of different compasses. I'm a big compass guy. Um, I carry a map, always carry a paper map where I'm going. I don't rely totally on my phone or GPS. I always have a map and a compass. I say, like I said, uh, I have in the bottom of this a military lensetic compass. I don't think I need to take that out to show it to you, but, um, and I always carry a map protractor so I can pinpoint my location. And I, that way I'm, I'm never uh, misoriented. I highly recommend you carry paper maps. You can get them. I did a, a video on how to get free maps through uh, National Geographic. You can print them and you can get color maps. You just have to use your printer ink and whatnot. In the other pocket on the other side, I have, because my wife is coming, normally she'd carry her own pouch with her uh, headlamp in it. We both have headlamps. These are Petzl, uh, 350 uh, uh, lumens. And uh, a recommendation for you, if you're gonna carry these, if you're gonna put batteries in, Leave one battery turned backwards so that because these don't have a lockout where if you get it, you know, up against something and it turns on your pack, it'll go dead. So uh, I recommend you take one of the batteries, turn it uh, backwards in that and uh, put it in there. So I've got that and I always carry a spare. Uh, to me, the rule, uh, military rule was uh, one is none, two is one. So I carry several items i know it's a lot more to carry in but and i've got a backup little headlamp in case this one breaks or whatever i'm not without a light in my front pocket so that i can get to it in the middle of the night if i'm out you know uh quartering an uh, elk a, in this case a bear uh, i've got two headlamps right here right in my front pocket where i can get to it and of course my wife's is is in the front pocket also also on that uh, on this i also have a natal, natal jean now jean bottle uh, in the winter pouch to keep it warm. Uh, don't need that where we're going now because it's going to be in August. It's going to be warm, 70 degrees. But I've got the human cap on it. Makes it easier to drink. We carry these so we can uh, do our Gatorade. We're a big fan of the. Uh, you can see right there. It's the uh, zero has zero calories. Uh, I know a lot of people say, well, young guys say, well, I need the sugar. You can get the regular if you want. These are little tiny pouches. They don't weigh anything. And they're really good to put in the Nalgene bottles. And that's all I've ever used. And I, well, I used to use the sugar stuff back in the day because they didn't have the zero sugar. Uh, but I'm a big Gatorade fan. Call it what you want. It, it works for me. I carry a spare bear spray on the side of the pack. Uh, don't ask me why. I can't even tell you why. I just do. Uh, I incorporate these straps. They're called rock straps. This is where my tent will be. And I will uh, leave a picture of my tent at the back of this uh, they're elastic on this side. They're called rock. I had the strap, but I don't know the uh, cardboard for it. And basically, these are go to 42 inches. You put your tent on the bottom and pull it down. When you pull it, it's elastic, holds it tight, so it won't uh, come off of there. I, I really love that. So the rest of the pack's empty except for the top. We'll go through what I carry in there, which is always in my pack. And so. One of the things I learned when I trained with the Swedish Army, uh, we went over to our unit and trained with them, and they used the Mora knife. And uh, this is a new one I purchased. I had one that I got over there was a green handled one. It was an issue one that they got me, and I really like the Mora knife. It's uh, heavy duty, has a uh, real nice shank on it. Uh, it's it's designed for rough use. You can baton wood with this, and it works like, to me, it's like a miniature hatchet and it only weighs eight ounces uh, with the holster and all. So in combination with the Gerber tool, I can, with this, I don't need a hatchet or a big uh, anything else. I can basically cut up wood. This one's five ounces, eight ounces, 13 ounces. I've got less than the weight of a hatchet and I can baton wood. I did a video on that if you're interested in how to baton wood. 
Uh, the Gerber tool, it's a cheapo, but you know what? I like it. It works really well. It locks out. Uh, the rules on using these saws, if you don't want to break any kind of saw, is there's always two rules on it. And one is, if you're going to saw with it, if you're going to saw short, you do fast. Short strokes, real fast, so you don't go too far with the blade and stretch the blade. If you're going to do long strokes with it, you want to do medium to slow strokes so that you don't flex the blade and snap it. If you do that, when you do it, you're never going to break one of these blades. I've had this a long time now. You can get a better one in my winter bag. Uh, in my Marshall pack, I have a uh, Slicky Boy, or I call it Slicky Boy, a Silky Boy, uh, being overseas. Okay, sorry about that Slicky Boy thing there. Um, Silky Boy, it's a better tool, but it's heavier, and it'll cut wood like nothing you've ever seen. Okay, so what else is in here? This is another thing I bought. Uh, this is my second one because my German Shepherd got to my first one chewed up, so this is a new one. It's called the Rock Sock. Now, normally I would just take a carabiner and I would throw my bear bag uh, over, which is in here, I'll show you in a second, just a waterproof bag. I would throw it over a tree limb and then, you know, pull it up and do the uh, Pacific Coast Trail method of securing that bag. Um, I saw this and I, I thought I'd try it and I loved it so much, so I had to buy a new one because the dog chewed it up. And what it does is it comes with this little sack. You put your rock in it. It comes with two different cords, so you can do what's called a double ratio pull. It's kind of like using a pulley system with a second carabiner that's in here. So you've got two. So when you throw, hook this, throw it over the tree with the first line, then you hook your second line in, hook it to that line, it's got a loop in it, and then you run it back through, put your second carabiner on and hook it to your bag. It works as a double pulley system. So if you've got say 50 pounds, it makes it like 20 pounds so that you're not cutting your hand when you're trying to pull up a heavy load of your bag. Now granted, your food shouldn't be that heavy unless there's two or three of you guys there. And uh, either way, uh, the, the rock set, awesome. Love it. I went and got another one because I like them so much. Highly recommend it for hanging hang your bear bag. You know, you can do it this way with the double pulley system. What I usually do is the Pacific Coast Trail method. And that was designed by some hippie guy, I think, in the 70s. Uh, Pacific Coast Trail runs on California, for those of you that don't know. And they encountered bears uh, in Northern California. So this, whoever decided to devise a way where they'll throw the carabiner over the tree run and pull it down, run the line back through it, pull it back up, and then they all uh, or pull their bag back up. And you take your stick and you pull it up to as high as you can. And if your cord is uh, real thin, you can use two sticks to you know rotate, tie around it, pull it down, grab another stick around, wrap it around, pull it down till you get to the point where your bag hits the bottom of the tree limb. Then what you do is you take your other stick and you reach up as high as you can go and you do what's called basically a clove hitch. Uh, you wrap around, twist around a couple times, and then come back the other way with it. It's hard for me to explain. If I was, I'll, I'll show it, and I'll do a video when me and my wife go up bear hunting. This and what that does is it allows the rope to free hang. You let it go back up. The sticks holds on the carabiner. The bag drops down about four feet from the bottom of the branch. Uh, the stick holds in the carabiner and doesn't allow the bag to come, uh, you know, to go up or down at that point. So when you want to release it. When you're ready to get your bag down, the bear just sees the string hanging there. He, or he can't do anything with it. And if he crawls on a tree, the bag's hanging down too low. He can't reach it. So you pull it up. You get up there under your stick, out of your clove hitch, and let it all the way down. That's how you get your stuff out of there. Or you can use the double pulley system. When you do that, though, you've got to tie it to a tree. And if a bear were to get smart enough, he could chew through your lines and, and whatnot anyway. So uh, other things I have in here are distress things for... Uh, for, yeah, it sounds like a duck call, doesn't it? It's supposed to be calves and, and whatnot. Uh, it's supposed a coyote call, and it's supposed to help, uh, you know, bring in the bear. I don't know in grizzly country if I'm going to try those or not. Uh, I'm not too new, thrilled about that idea. I carry some uh, twine to put up my tarp. I have a, uh, uh, I did another video on that. I have the, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of this tarp. I'll pull it out here in a little bit and talk about it. Uh, 10 by 12 tarp. So I have that. I have six carabiners. I have a uh, fire starter in here. Uh, I have more fire starting material. This is uh, fat wood, so I can start a fire if I need to. And that's basically all in this pocket that I have. And you're thinking, well, that's a lot of stuff to carry. But you know, I'm always, the way I was taught years ago is always bring more gun to the fight than you need. Always have more things. One is none. Two, uh, you know. So yeah, you got to carry a little more weight, but let's not wuss out on that because. The old saying, a lot of people like to say, well, go in uh, light, come out heavy. My theory is go in heavy, 
prepare your body for what's coming. You're going to have to make five trips anyway over two or three days if you get an elk because they're heavy. Uh, you know, prepare for that and, you know, bring what you need so you're not suffering. That's just my opinion. Do what you want. This is some of the stuff I have in here. Advil, ibuprofen, more water purification tablets, cotton balls uh, saturated with uh, uh, Vaseline and then dipped in wax. A lighter with duct tape on it. Duct tape is another accelerant. If you look and see my video, I did one on that. In here, uh, I have a, uh, another ferro rod. I have some black tape. I have another compass. <laughs> I know, extensive, right? Too many, too many compasses. I have toilet tissue in a roll. Uh, you know, we have, I'll show you here, we have a big uh, roll of toilet paper and some other stuff. We'll get to that. Uh, but this, that's going to be our, our spike camp. This is going to be in my bag when we go out glassing. And then a, a go girl for the wife, if we're under a tarp, and she can't walk, you know, want to walk out in a pouring rain. She's got a little go-go thing. She can keep it contained to an area and then not, you know, tinkle everywhere. Um, this, I really like. I've used this a long time. I have one of these each one in my pack. It is the Trail Shot by MSR. And uh, it's great for everywhere, but except freezing weather. Um, it works great. Uh, it's better than one of those life straws where you stick your butt in the air and you got to hang down on there. Uh, the great thing about this is that... Uh, you can fill, you know, an energy bottle or you can drink directly right out of here as you pump it from the stream. It's got a pre-filter on here and then the, it's got little, like what I call them straws, but they're little fiber, look like uh, fiber straws inside there filter the, the contaminants out. And it's very effective. It's made by MSR. Really like this. And in freezing cold conditions, you can use it and I have done it, but you've got to take the valve out of this side here or take the hose completely off. And there's another valve underneath the cap. You remove it. There's a little rubber valve in there. You take it out and then blow the uh, moisture back out of the straws. Shake it out real good and then keep it in your inner pocket. And then it, won't, uh, uh, it won't freeze up on you and damage those straws. Uh, I call them straws, but damage the filter. And you can check that out in the field uh, if you have water in a pot that you've you know, warmed up or you've, you've got some running water somehow like from a stream. You can check to make sure that this thing is still working, functioning properly, and you can look that up in line. I'm not going to go over it now. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, I carry another uh, hydro pack in here, so I can fill that if I need to in emergency. And I carry two extra spoons for an emergency me and for me and the wife. There's two in here, titanium spoons. They weigh nothing. So that's in there. I know it's a lot of stuff. You're thinking, what the heck? Why has he got so much stuff in there? Well, that's just me. I'm used to carrying heavy packs in the military. I'm 60 years old, and if I can carry, you know, 55, 60 pound pack in, you know, because it's going to be 70, 80 pounds when I come out with a quarter on there. So, you know, to me, it's it's worth the trade off to have the comfort items, to have everything we need, especially when I got my wife with me. Last thing I want is an unhappy wife, because an unhappy wife, unhappy life, right? Uh, Tyvex, I use this as for two purposes: one to set down on my pack if there's mud or whatever. Also, I use it uh, outside the tent as a drop sheet, and I just stick it in here to go. Okay, kind of long way to go over some of the food. Now, um, I, we found, me and my wife, we experiment with a bunch of food. We don't want to be out there and, and have a bunch of food we didn't like. I found this called like a pack of gourmet. It's made in Austin, Texas. We're from Texas. Made by a bunch of hippies. <laughs> I call them hippies. Austin's full of a lot of uh, crazy folk. And uh, But anyway, great food. I got to tell you, we, we ate this at home. We loved it. Uh, they make several, several different varieties. Uh, the one, all of these were really good, but the shepherd's pie. One we liked the best was the Texas chili. And, uh, where is that at in here? I don't really have to show you, I guess, but, uh, there's Texas state fair chili. This is amazing. Comes with crackers and wouldn't the hot sauce come in this, honey? There's a bottle of hot sauce in the package. You rip it open and notice it's a low profile bag. So you're not, if you didn't have a long spoon, it would work really well for you. Uh, I've got that, and then uh, I've got my bag in here. I just use a small, this will be the bag the food will go in and strength from the uh, the tree. This all fits in there. I already checked it. This is for, uh, you know, a whole week. Then when we're out on the, uh, I use these out on the uh, glassing site. They're a little heavier, uh, but they have a self-heating in it like we had in our military MREs. You add water to it. You don't need to heat your water up. It heats up for you. You've got a hot meal. And we and the wife can share a hot meal. Uh, it's fantastic. I, the quality of this food is real good. 
uh, low gas product, and I'll explain that. You know, if you're reading Mountain House and Cliff Bars, we'll talk about gas sex here in a little bit. Um, the other thing I take is these freeze-dried strawberries. They weigh nothing. If you need Heather's Choice, there's not a lot of flavor to this nut, banana nut brag or the, uh, the other uh, one here. It's another self-heating packet. Their oatmeal. It's pretty good, but it, need, it has uh, maple syrup in it, but it doesn't have a lot of sugar. Adding the uh, strawberries to it makes it a much better meal, both of these. You just hydrate these, add them to the meal. works really good. So I carry some of the self-heating meals for on our glassing site so that we don't have to, uh, you know, heat up the, the stove out there because, you know, it's going to be warm when we're out there. It's not going to be cold. So we'll set that aside. So that, that's our food. I like the packet gourmet. Uh, I highly recommend it. We, we tested at home. We liked it. Even the kids said, hey, that's some good stuff. So I highly recommend that. So uh, that tarp I was talking about, get that out of the way. It's this one right here. Uh, it's one I did the actual uh, deal on it. Uh, the stick is... I forget what they call this tarp now. I, I did a video on it. You can look it up. Uh, I'll carry this because we can set this up if it's raining and stay out of the rain on our glassing site. And sorry, I, I'm having a Biden moment. I can't remember what the heck the name of this thing is. Um, for bags, I want to get some of the Graxaw bags that Gritty Bowman, uh, Brian Call talks about. For right now, I'm just using Allen for my bear. It's cheap. They're huge bags. They don't weigh a lot, but they're, it's a lot of space. Uh, that's what I'm using for my bags for now, the Allen bags. Um, for light, I've got this. It is the Goal Zero. And I, I really like this so far. We'll see if it works. Um, it basically is your tent light. And you can use it, you know, as a kind of a spotlight. And it can be charged. And uh, I've heard some you know, rumors that it didn't work so well for other people. See, so it just went off. And that's what they were talking about. They said they turned it on, it goes off. We'll see if that's the case. And it's starting to do it now. So, okay, well, maybe we don't want to recommend that one. But uh, it may be just because I let the charge down. So I last charge it. Let's hope that's not the case. Uh, but I've got that. And because, you know, one is none, two, I have a, a backup, which is a um, black diamond tent lamp. I know that one will work. It's got the batteries. And I've got uh, Gold Zero One charge pack. We'll go in my pack out for glassing. Uh, gets one charge and eh, almost one charge on the on the iPhone 11 uh, Pro, and then I've got the big pack here. It's called the uh, man, I can't remember anything anymore. CRS bad power ad. Uh, it's big bank. It can charge uh, my cell phone six times completely. Um, great deal. Uh, for me and the wife, we like these goals uh, chair zeros. They weigh 11 ounces, and these are so comfortable. They have a back to them. Um, they're worth taking in. I mean, they're comfortable. You can glass in these. They keep you off the ground so you're not getting ticks. Uh, they, they work great. We used them a couple times, and we're loving them. Uh, fantastic little chairs, lightweight. I don't like a stool for glassing. I like to support my back. I'm older, and after humping this pack all day, I love the fact that I can sit in this and rest my back on it, and my back feels better. It's like, you know, actually sitting in a chair. Uh... These go in the pack. Uh, these are contractor bags. Uh, I recommend you get the uh, the big six mil contractor. These these are the kind of bags that uh, every father knows about. They're you know the kind that you need to carry out your daughter's boyfriend if you need to. You guys that are dads, you know what I'm talking about. Um, for mattress pads, inflatable air mattresses, I have the old Recon XLs. We had these for a while, and I've had to fix them a few times. They had a little pump valve on the side. Uh, that went out and you'd cut it with scissors and you'd take an iron and seam it. And I did that, uh, made it work. I uh, cut some of the back bottom of this one off so it's shorter for the wife. They work great with the down bags because they have uh, holes cut in them at certain points uh, where you don't have pressure points. It allows the uh, down to get in those pockets and let it keep its fluff so that you basically get better insulation. It's cooler and warmer in the winter. Um, for these... I have the inflator, and I know it's an extra ounce and a half, but I like this. Uh, you hook it to the pad. You don't have to sit here and blow your, your head off trying to, you know, put, fill those things up. You open it up, suck it full of air, and, and roll it down, and it fills the, uh, basically two times and you fill the whole pad firm. Uh, two, two to three, get that filled. 
Um, for my kill kit, I do those in orange and the first aid kit in orange. Um, in there, I have a uh, emergency blanket which I lay my meat on uh, to you know butcher it. Uh, I have some nitro gloves. Another, another backup Petzl headlamp. Yeah, I know I'm a fanatic. Uh, outdoor edge, the knife and a blades. A small, um, what do you call these? Uh, Gerber. Uh, wow, I'm having a Biden day today for sure. It's a, a Gerber. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. Anyway, also I forgot. Imagine that. Uh, in the inner pocket in here, I have these fold-out bags, and in the winter I put in uh, my snow cleats, my mini micro spikes. But here I have an extra, uh, the bigger one, uh, the Gerber, uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> I can't remember to save my life right now. And let me see here. And I've got here, I have a first aid kit, an emergency first aid kit, because this kit that I'm going to show you is going to stay at our spike camp. And this is the little medic bag I have for us out at the scene with some band-aids and whatnot, first to get, and a small survival kit has, you know, some, a little knife in it and some other things in it to, uh, to help you out. And El Cheapo, one of the first Leathermans, I think they came out with way back in the day. I have one. Uh, I keep that in here. It doesn't weigh much. And I keep that inside here also, inside the pack. Forgot, almost forgot about that stuff when I was going over the pack. Made me think about it when I was getting to the first aid kit. It's driving me crazy that I can't think of what they call those uh, Gerber, um, Gerber knives. Okay, uh, for the first aid kit, I highly recommend make sure you have these. Uh, I left these out so I wouldn't forget. If you're eating the chewables, if you're eating Mountain House or Cliff Bars combination, that is some of the most toxic stuff. You know, you're going to smell as it is from, uh, you know, humping in the, in the, you know, up the mountain and whatnot, but uh, I've smelt some toxic people that literally you want to drag them out in their sleeping bag and leave them outside the tent. They were that bad coming through their sleeping bag even. So bring gas X, honestly, chewable tablets. <laughs> Make sure you have that in your, I don't call it a possibles kit. I call it a comfort kit. Uh, and this is my first aid kit. In here, I have Neosporin. I have more stuff. I, being a, a, a former paramedic, I know I use a lot, a little bit more than most folks, so I carry a bunch of stuff. I've got extra pills. I got uh, ibuprofen, Tylenol, PM. Uh, I've even got uh, surgical glue stick. Uh, it's basically surgical glue in a pen, so that I can, you know, without doing sutures, I can do this. I also have steri strips in here, depending on if the skin is not too moist or wet. I can do those, or I can use the tape to hold it while I, every quarter inch I can do a, a stitch with the uh, stuff there I've got a whole first aid kit I've got a tourniquet in here and I carry every kind of possible medicine in there that you can think of like I said a gas X uh, I've got ammonium AD I've got Dr. Boudreaux's butt paste sounds funny but it works I use it on my kids and I found that if you get butt rash or whatever you get swamp I almost said the word you get swamp butt uh, you're gonna want Dr. Boudreaux's Guys in the military use it, comes in a little container, won't, you won't crack it open. Uh, get that Dr. Blue Rose butt paste. This is the bag, I did a video on it. Uh, the Hydro Pack 8 liter. Uh, and again, I use the, the works, the MSR uh, mini works. Uh, what I like about this is it's been around for a lot of years. We use these in the military. It's got a ceramic filter uh, and it can adapt. This part will screw onto not only this bag, because this bag uses the same screw attachment as, if you look at my wife's natal gene bottle right there, it'll screw onto the top of her natal gene bottle on her pack. Uh, and this pump screws on there and you can literally pump a liter a minute with this. So I can fill this eight liter bag in eight minutes, uh, you know, or less. You younger guys that are younger single guys, you know, you probably got strong arm on the right or left and you probably fill that a lot quicker than me. So I'm um, attempt the humor again. In this bag is basically our eating utensils bag. Um, I've got salt and pepper shaker with uh, a little, I get these out of my medicines. It's, uh, you know, like you can put rice in there too to keep the moisture out, but I just use those. I get them my medicines from the VA. Uh, I got two uh, Gerber Completes and two titanium forks. I also will have in here sugar and coffee packets for 
for us to drink um, because if you look right here, we have two titanium uh, cups for our coffee, our hot beverages. It's going to be warm, so we probably use a lot of coffee. I use the Minimo, uh, and the reason why I do the Minimo is you can do bare fat on top of this. Works really good for that. Um, and I like the fact the Minimo, you can do the little frying pan that you can get that goes on top of it. Uh, and I can cook tortillas on this because most of the meals I showed you uh, use tortillas, the, the beef wrap and the chicken wrap. And so, and it comes with its own little spatula and I've added a couple other little tools in here to, uh, you know, so I can cook different stuff on there if I, if I need to. Of course, you don't want to be cooking too much smelly food in grizzly country. So the only thing we'll be doing on this probably is heating up tortillas and place them on these uh, Tupperware plates. How many years have you had these, honey? Oh, gosh, at least 20 years. So these last for Tupperware. Lightweight, don't weigh nothing. Throw some napkins in, people. Get some comfort items. Don't weigh much. Jeez. And you throw on the fire when you're done. Uh, do tortillas on these. Got two plates, one for me and one for the wife. Uh, do that. Uh, highly recommend that to you, too. Minimo, great stove. Toilet paper, make sure you got a big roll for your base camp. I showed you had the little roll in here. Uh, make sure you got a little a drawl. This is a plastic cheapo. I've got aluminum ones in my other pack. Uh, this is one that I, I forget where I bought this, but I, I had it, so I threw it in here for this one. I use the combat wipes, and I use the women's, even for myself. Uh, if you're not a hairy guy, you don't look like the backside of a black bear, um, get the women's wipes. They're a little bit gentler on you. Uh, baby wipes just seem to you know move the stuff around and not clean. These actually clean. And uh, you found these really good too, didn't you, hon? I did. Yeah, yeah. so my wife's used them. Uh, we love them. The combat wipes get you clean. Won't leave you raw. You won't have to use them. But Boo Rose butt paste if you uh, use those. Uh, again, Gatorade. So my wife is going to be carrying my wife's going to be carrying the uh, Camelback water, two liter, with her natal gene bottle on the back. And uh, we're, I love the Stone Glacier uh, holder. It went well on the Molly attachments that were on that pack. And uh, it holds on there really good, you can see. And then she can still put her little wallet or whatever else in the bottom back there. So, um, for we'll go over the items over here on the shelf. What I use to keep the ticks off. The first one is the perithium. I spray the bottom of the tent with that. I used to do the ground sheet and the, the four footprint, but now I just do the bottom of the tent, works great. Uh, the other one is I use for our equipment. It's You want at least a 40% DEET in a spray. And then the other one is 100% DEET. That's when we put on around our legs, on our socks, and around our boots to keep the ticks. And that, the Benz is real good. 100% DEET, it will keep the ticks off you. If you had problems with ticks, get Benz, get the Repel, it works. And that I can promise you. Um, coming back here to optics, I've got... We're taking, I'm taking my El Cheapo, some of my first binos I had. And uh, this was a pair I had when I was in law enforcement. And the glass in these is amazing. I paid $109 for these. They're the Steiner Police, made in Germany. The glass is fantastic. The only drawback to these is the exit pupil is real small because you're talking eight power with a 30 millimeter objective lens. Your exit pupil is pretty small, so low light gathering capabilities is kind of not that good, but I can tell you what, these are better than the Bushnells I had before that and the other cheaper binos I had. These things are awesome. But why, why I like these for the wife is each eyepiece is completely adjustable. And so with her glasses, she can adjust these perfectly to get such a clear view. Uh, they're fantastic for her. And the area we're going to be glassing, like I said, there's not, uh, it's dark timber, so she's not going to be able to, uh, you know, do it. And then these are just a pair of Vortex. Uh, I think these, are, I have, the dime bag. I have Leopold uh, ones I just bought this last year. They're pretty good. This is the Vortex Diamondback uh, spotting scope. It's not the HD. It's the older one I bought. I think the uh, High Country tripod, real cheap. It's not very sturdy, but it works. If you don't have a lot of money, this is the way I had to go. It's $400 for the tripod and the spotting scope. It works for me. I mean, I, I, I'd love to have a, a Steiner you know, spotting scope or one of the other ones. Uh, but I don't have fifteen hundred bucks or two thousand dollars spent for that stuff. I, yeah, I got four daughters, two in college, two going to college. Blah blah blah. My sad story, but uh, I don't have that money spent. I got a budget for what I have. I have to use what I some of the stuff I have and make it work. Um, that's basically my gear list. Um, if you have any questions, you can put it at the bottom. You see anything I might have missed? I can't think of anything. I probably brought more. I got the kitchen sink and I think I got a dining room table. 
with all this stuff here. Uh, but that's my video. I, I hope if any of you are planning on bear hunting, it kind of gives you some maybe some ideas. Don't forget your toothbrush and toothpaste. Nobody wants hairy teeth. And uh, that's my video. Thanks for watching.